All right, guys, we're hitting the June 13th, uh, 1931. Marty's gotten a little dressed for the occasion, so he doesn't start any questions Marty. on why he's dressed so weirdly. Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? I'm surprised his dad isn't like shocked of uh, why there's a DeLorean you? there that wasn't the there before. Uh, we're doing or that he didn't even hear it in wrath. the first place. Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? Alright, they get into the time machine and they're about to start what we've all been waiting to see for a good long while. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Not that. Uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Pretty simple idea. Sadly, you don't drive the time machine. Maybe they'll let you do it in a later episodic content, but right now, you just have to enjoy the show. So anyway, enjoy. find it very high, highly um, likely that he would end up right in the middle of them, but I mean, go figure. And thank you, spraying out gunk. And something tells me this is the same sign he's hid the time machine twice before behind it. Yeah, if you've seen the movies, you know what I'm talking about. Got a nice little two-mile walk ahead of him. I'm pretty sure he's used to it by now. Anyway, here we are. Welcome to Einstein. June thirteenth. Where'd you go now, boy? Nineteen thirty one Hill Valley. It's not so different as what it was in the fifties. There's less like Hess gas stations and stuff like that. Plus there's that little um group meeting area middle place in the middle of the center of the courthouse area. That little place right there, those people are talking at. And he doesn't look where he's going. What a surprise. Young man! Excuse me, young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. 
I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about his heroic act of destruction? There's gotta be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. You can mark me down as a supporter. The young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, this bitch sin, is and debauchery? very stalkerish. If I don't, if I do say so myself. No, not Seems not like really. someone we've met That's before. The spirit. Destroy them with indifference. If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... I had to make a really good decision, either Sonny Crockett, Harry Callahan, or Mark Corleone. I go with Mark Corleone, because Corleone. I love Godfather. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. Oh my god! I know, it's Edna. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better- Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times! It's the law! Look it up! Doc! I gotta find Doc! Well, the police station's over that way, so we could just keep walking. There are a bunch of little things we could do just to see stuff, but um, we can do that in the next episode, um, since we will be walking around Hill Valley a lot for the next episode. Anyway, here's the police station. Had a little bit of a time trying to find the little icon let me go inside the police station, but um, finally popped up right now, right there. And I just walked in. Enjoy. Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to, uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram! Oh, Marty, you're so honest. Oh, we can still Doc. talk to Doc. Right here, jail window. Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system. Of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. I really hope they explain so how he still made another time you. machine, because for real. We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't you would think by now how many times easy. Doc has Very literally funny, been Doc. screwed you over should come up with a plan. that he Quiet. wouldn't fuck Fight. around with things like this. But what? But, I mean, what do you expect? Why don't we tell the authorities? Tell them what? That my friend from the future has proof that I'll be murdered tomorrow? They'd ship us both off to the loony bin. And trust me, you don't want to see the inside of a 1931 insane asylum. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Mark. Likewise. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. 
and that's any better? Why don't we try to tough it out? Now that we know what's coming, maybe we sneak it past the gangsters with a bulletproof vest or something. That might work with one or two bullets, but from the looks of this article, it appears that I'm going to be mowed down in a hail of Tommy gun fire that rendered the innocent stranger little more than a puffy mass of bones and gristle. Who writes like that? According to the byline, one Edna Strickland. I should have guessed. Oh, what a surprise. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen. A few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Because they thought you were fucking right, batshit crazy? crazy? Back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Won't talking to yourself cause That's still a know, stretch even to me. damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go with my younger self into finishing the prototype. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed to- Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, Should be. let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. But yeah, we're, we're about hitting the end point of this episode, but we are going to be introduced to two very important people. And if anyone knows the geography of this area, ooh, that looks Make familiar. Fly. Biff? And he looks familiar Jed. too. Grandpa? That's Mr. Yep. Cannon to you, Audie. What are you doing out here? That is. Well, I was Biff's getting kind father? of hungry, so I figured and I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Grandpa McFly. Think McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. But yeah, if, if you know the geography of the area in, the of my in number crunch, any Back to Future movie, this is where I could even the, get sent up the dance river. area, the oh, fitness would area you? in the 80s, the 80s bar in would the you? 2000s. Uh, no, and of course what was the not, other place? Kid. What was the other place? Oh, the saloon. There's just better. been a bunch of places. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well... Well, what? What are you still but doing anyway, here? anyway, that's Kid Tannen Sorry, and Kid, Arthur I'll McFly. Just run back to the safe house. You do that. Nerdy and as McFly, hell. McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Uh, now scram! You got it, what a boss. Dick. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to anyway, make guys, myself irresistible. This is the end of the Don't episode. I will see y'all next time. Be good.
and I'll see y'all tomorrow.